going live. Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer and I have with me Sri TG Mohandas and we are going to talk about a topic that probably has not been discussed much in India's media. First of all, it is completely blacked out in Kerala. They don't say a word about Soros. The most literate, the most educated, 100% educated state of Kerala don't think that Soros exists or is doing some mischief to India. So to know all about this, how things have come to here and how, uh, you know, the most educated state in India goes to great lengths to suppress news. Let's welcome our guest of the evening, Sri T.G. Mohandas. Mohandas Ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. How are you, sir? Very fine. Very fine. Thank you. Uh, nice to have you again. Sir, the pleasure See, is all mine. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, I have, I read this news of a Prime Point Foundation in Chennai. Yes. Which is giving Sansad Ratna Awards from 2011 or 12 or so. Hmm. And uh, they claim that uh, they are inspired by Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. Uh, one Mr. Srinivasan is the... Srinivasan is a one-man show. I know, I know. I've talked to him. <laughs> yeah. Chairman of the foundation. And uh, they declared this year's awards, Sansad Ratna Awards, which includes a CPM MP, John Britas from Kerala. Now, uh, from their website, I understand that this award is given for outstanding contribution in the parliament by initiating discussion and debates, asking questions, be present in the respective sabha, and bring private bills, etc., etc. Now, the committee who chose the award is, was uh, chaired by Arjun Ram Meghwal. He is the present State Minister of uh, Parliamentary Affairs. And uh, one more member, and another member, one more Rajya Sabha, uh, Lok Sabha MP, N.K. Premajandran from Kerala. So when I went back to the data, I saw that uh, so many CPM, CPI, Janta Dal, Janta Dal, U, BJP, Shiv Sena, TDP, you name it, every party is given an award either this year or next year, irrespective of their contribution. And this foundation claims that they are taking data from PRS legislative. PRS legislative entered into a controversy that uh, PRS legislative was feeding information to CPIM MPs in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. That was in 2009-2010. And CPM officially dissociated. They said it was a mistake for us to depend on PRS legislative. We will not do that because we don't believe in uh, uh, some multinational funded organizations conducting a study on parliament. Anyway, this foundation is depending on the data provided by PRS legislative and parliamentary uh, parliament secretariat. That is what they claim. I think probably the ministers are helping them because our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has tweeted and congratulated the, the award-winning uh, MPs. I don't know what is so big about uh, congratulating them because Take the simple case of uh, uh, this John Britas. He has made some uh, some interruptions in the Rajya Sabha, and he uh, he belongs to the shouting brigade in the Rajya Sabha. He has never initiated any discussion. I don't know where he has utilized his uh, MP lads fund. Nothing is there. He is, according to any sensible man, you evaluate his performance. He is just anti modi speaker in Rajya Sabha, that's all. And they get very little time in Rajya Sabha because their representation is too low in Rajya Sabha. They get hardly one minute or two minutes and then they beg with the speaker. Finally, the speakers give them five or six minutes 
when there are no uh, audience hardly 10 or 15 mps were there they make lengthy speeches even this is their contribution now nk premachandran is an intelligent man no doubt but uh, he is a single man uh, mp in lok sabha by revolutionary socialist party our uh, viewers might have forgotten such a party which was a big party in uh, bengal a reasonable party in kerala but then in bengal they extinguished in kerala they split into two and uh, they have one mp one of, one of the group having one mp that is premachandran now premachandran also doesn't get much time in lok sabha and premachandran is awarding sansad ratna to uh, john britas under uh, the committee of uh, arjun ram megwal supervised by uh, shrinivas this is the joke which is going on and they call it sansad ratna which gives an impression that government of india is uh, giving this award or some parliamentary committee is giving this award and they started campaigning in social media that see modi government has given award to john britas now what to say about uh, such a great personality etc etc the right wing is going on clarifying that this is not a government award including j gopikrishnan j gopikrishnan should have clarification by this has nothing to do with the government it is called sansad ratna but it is prime point foundation a private foundation in chennai one man no. <laughs> i only know srinivasan there i haven't heard of any other person he puts out this monthly weekly gazettes that land in my whatsapp uh, thread also um, sir i'm saying i'm sure you are going to link this to sora somehow please continue now who is funding all these activities either prs legislative or somebody else now this foundation is releasing e magazine containing parliamentary speeches i hear sir you and i can do that it is there in the lok sabha and rajya sabha website you just copy paste it convert it to an e book and say that oh i did a great job i have selected speeches of uh, finest speeches in rajya sabha and lok sabha and you go some haldiram dhania has spoken some nonsense in rajya sabha and everything is printed in this e book it is copy paste so th- this type of uh, bogus foundations uh, are raising doubts in uh, my mind because this sansad ratna award is uh, uh, given almost at the time which is synchronized with the with bharat ratna uh, yeah yeah oh i see i see i see i see i see accusation of uh, modi's connection with adani so uh, this i think uh, is a small gift to the people who criticize uh, soros that soros is ready to finance you also provided you speak uh, his language soros language <laughs> oh soros is creating so many uh, uh, not only global uh, what is that open global foundation open, so- open societies foundation open, open society, society foundations. foundations yeah what does he mean open society that means i Anarchy. walk uh, naked yeah. on the road that is what he calls open society the these type of uh, finances creating nonsense in this country are to be curbed immediately now what happened in kerala media i will tell you the leading uh, media house in kerala uh, asianet owned by none other than rajiv chandrashekar a minister in uh, modi's cabinet they gave the news uh, of length of 1 and 1/2 minute 1 hour 29 se- 1 minute 29 seconds that was the news they just said just reported what soro said and they left them the other one media one which is a, a muslim group uh, it belongs to jamaat e islami they did a 9 minutes 35 seconds presentation on george soros but uh, which was more on adani modi connection than george soros all other channels were silent everyone was silent they behaved as if soros didn't speak in munich conference 
and Munich Conference itself did not take place. They have completely skipped the event. And I started searching by why this was not reported. It was uh, reported and debated by uh, Times Now, uh, Republic, uh, Z News, India Today, so many people. They had discussion on that. Anand Rangaranathan, in his uh, usual style, uh, exploded on uh, George Soros for interfering in the matters of in uh, India. So many things happened, but Kerala media is absolutely unaware. They have only uh, one point that uh, Modi is connected to Adani. That's all uh, what they did. Now, I think, and I accuse Kerala media of uh, uh, taking money through some source, may not be directly from Open Society Foundation. They have a lot of other foundation and agencies, uh, branches through which uh, money can be flown to India. Uh, obviously, it will be through a legal channel because illegal transfer can, can be caught hold of at any point of time. These people are very clever. And they make, uh, they keep BJP MPs also happy, probably by giving this type of awards, Sansad Ratna uh, or this Ratna, that Ratna. See, people get elated uh, when somebody praises you that, oh, Mohandas is a fantastic speaker, thinker, this, that. Then I just uh, get automatically inflated uh, by your pep talk. And then I walk into your trap and I speak up or I keep silence also. Certain things which are unpleasant, I will not speak. So uh, media takes money, which is known to everybody, that media takes money to flash a news and not to flash a news. This was first disclosed by uh, the MD, and he is the anchor also of a reporter channel, which is on the financial uh, collapse, which is on the brim of the collapse, but it has not yet collapsed. Uh, he is uh, M.B. Nikesh Kumar. He, in an interview with other journalists on a web portal, he said that money is being flown in media circles for uh, putting out a news and killing a news. Now, from where from this money comes, he did not uh, disclose. I did my program on what he spoke. And I said, at least this man's uh, candid nature is to be appreciated. He doesn't disclose the source, but he says that money is deciding everything in Kerala media. Now, you see the candid admission of uh, George Soros, in which uh, last year, I think, he said he is keeping around $1 billion to destroy nationalism. Destroy nationalism. So, uh, what is wrong with nationalism? That may be uh, better explained by George Soros. I don't know. But for we nationalists, it is a plain, simple statement that I am using $1 billion or I have kept a budget of $1 billion for killing nationalists or destroying them may not be physically killing, but uh, you know um, what uh, our uh, foreign minister, Dr. Jay Shankar says, uh, politics by other means. Uh, apparently it is not politics. It's a report. It is a statistics, something, but it is politics. That is what Dr. Jay Shankar said about uh, George Soros. He said the old, opinionated, and uh, dangerous man. And he explained uh, why he uses such uh, words also. I have no other way but to agree with uh, Dr. Jayashankar in this uh, assessment. But what is the countermeasure he is going to take is still a secret, which obviously he said uh, that uh, such thing cannot be disclosed. So, um, see. I am going to do this thing through this country. Cannot be disclosed by an external affairs minister. It is foolish to disclose that. You do it, then people will see, Are, uh, ye karne wala tha. this is what uh, was his reply. But if he did it, 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 he did it
uh, but uh, worries me is that kerala is not in the scheme of things of uh, our prime minister or home minister they are uh, very weak in uh, estimating kerala see potentially dangerous elements are from kerala you take any instance in india you take delhi riots kerala media plus kerala youth were in board you take the jnu tukde tukde gang barring few like omar khalid everybody else was from kerala you take the trouble makers in shahin bag like siddiq kapan and other people they were from kerala the people who tried to create hatras they were from kerala you take rohit vemila incident in hyderabad university majority of the people are from kerala you take disturbance in iit chennai the participants are more from kerala than any other state you take the arrest of uh, various uh, radical elements in up 99% turn out to be keralaites you take agnivir disturbance keralaites were behind that so every terrorist or subversive operation in india is either financed through kerala or the equipments are going through kerala or the manpower is being supported by kerala or the intellectual and media support is given by kerala and this kerala you are ignoring are kuch chota hai corner mein kuch to ja raha hai hone do na kya hai you feel i always uh, remember that uh, kerala is a border state karnataka is a border state tamil nadu is a border state merely because in your border there is sea doesn't make you a borderless state you have a border that is arabian sea and the sea is much much more vulnerable than the land that is why the napoleon said that do uh, a man who rules the sea will rule the land also the sea is important navy is the most important component of our defense not air force or army navy is the most important uh, uh, element why because we have such a huge uh, coastal Coast area line. starting from Coast gujarat line, yeah. and ending up to bengal so on, almost every state has got uh, except uh, uh, madhya pradesh uttar pradesh etc bihar they don't have sea coast otherwise every state has got sea as the border either uh, bengal um, i mean bay of bengal or arabian sea or hind mahasagar how can you ignore uh, kerala is it not a border state is it not the hub of uh, uh, terrorist and subversive activities in way back in 2016 i wrote to rajnath singh with uh, evidences almost uh, 10 12 incidents which happened in kerala i told him certain areas are to be declared troubled zone uh, and then uh, you apply armed forces special power act there or you hand over those villages to a magistrate there is provision in uh, constitution the constitution has fully an armored uh, uh, indian union to deal with any subversive activity and you know when uh, george soros made his statement everybody ignored a particular word he said india's federal government now india doesn't have a federal government george soros purposely uh, added federal government he he is having um, uh, america is having a federal government our constitution does not allow a federal structure it is not federal it is union of india now uh, uh, rahul gandhi he was continuously asking for a federal 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 now he stopped it because federal word is not there in the constitution so now he is uh, giving union of india matlab uh, fragmented society etc or nonsense uh, uh, definition he is giving but he has stopped talking about federal but uh, george soros in his speech calls india as federal government of india 
and he says democracy will prevail narendra modi will vanish uh, sooner than uh, that so with his money uh, now people tell me are wo sab bahut budha ho gaya hai jor soros ab kya karega they don't understand the power of money whether jor soros is alive or not his system will function his echo chambers will function you know how how they do they uh, produce a report in europe and it is uh, corroborated in india because it is corroborated again it is repeated in europe because europe is repeating again india will corroborate this way the echo chamber will uh, work washington post will lift an article from hindu and hindu will uh, lift the same article from washington post salma will quote sabrina and sabrina will quote sarma um, the, the, this way the ecosystem the echo chamber will increase the volume continuously when you listen to something part of that goes to your head that is how the word federalism uh, they just smuggled into the indian mind and prime minister of india is vulnerable to, for that See, he speaks about cooperative federalism what does it mean nobody knows supreme court says in certain cases our constitution is quasi federal what does it mean nobody knows nobody defines this word just like the word uh, secularism federalism is not defined quasi federalism is not defined um what is that cooperative federalism is not defined these are the words used by supreme court and prime minister is it not uh, sheer irresponsibility that you speak uh, you use certain idioms of which the meaning is uh, uh, amorphous anybody can use that anybody can quote you tomorrow so be very careful this is the way people are being fed the narrative slowly people will start believing that we are a federal uh, government therefore we have a freedom to secede from this country therefore let us ask for freedom therefore let us form a coalition from with tamil nadu and uh, kerala we can form a coalition then attach our country to gulf countries all sorts of uh, reckless imagination goes from one word which is spoken by prime minister but they are successfully creating narratives tell me sir um i just wanted to uh, compliment what you said uh, the remember the famous line in kashmiri files uh, satta unka hai lekin system hamara hai now to to try and help modi dr subramanian swami had given well to him he has given it he has not released the names to the outside public that there are 27 ias officers ias ifs irs officers who need to be out of your immediate circle because these people are the ones who are planted from other places who will be counterproductive to you and and to my uh, you know uh, utter uh, surprise only four have been acted upon two of them have found a way back into the uh, system again so recently only two have been weeded out just two and and if you saw what you reap uh, mohandas ji Modi doesn't have time to write speeches, his own speeches. He is reading somebody's written speech. Does he check and see if the if somebody else looks at the speech to see if that was correct? Whether the the precision in language. You are just reading a speech. Then it is the responsibility of the speech writer to introduce precision in the speech. What is the uh, guy doing? Do we know? See, a long time ago we have lost this thing. professionalism versus your own personal political preference this has no place in the professionalism no place but yet that is continuing you are seeing so many spats happening so these are some of the problems that the modi government faces and i completely agree with you that he is blind to what is happening in kerala the laboratory of terrorism in india i i'll let you continue sir now गवर्नमेंट उनकी होगी सिस्टम तो हमारा है दीज आर दर्ड्स ऑफ ए कैरेक्टर इन ए फिल्म 
which caught uh, immediate attention of the people and uh, quite often everybody quotes that but this was the situation which was faced by communists way back in 1957 when they formed their first elected government in the world they never faced any election they came to power uh, every time through revolutions uh, killings so many things it was the first time in kerala they came through elections they came to power the system was against them because before that whatever uh, partial autonomy kerala had under the british rule as well as uh, uh, interim government by nehru they also do they had uh, travancore kochi assembly etc everything belonged to government the bureaucracy and the police were partly loyal to uh, congress more than that they were royal to uh, loyal to uh, travancore royal family not even to uh, kochi uh, royal family kochi royal family slowly uh, lost their grip over things so a police which is more loyal to the royal family a bureaucracy which is 100% loyal to the congress this was the system which confronted the uh, communist party but they moved ruthlessly they were dismissed prematurely that was the first dismissal in uh, india within two years in 1959 they were dismissed because they were a state government you could dismiss them imagine what will happen if they are in center who can dismiss them there is no constitutional provision to dismiss the uh, government of india the president cannot dismiss and declare a president's rule that will go against the constitution he may do that but that will be against the constitution so instead of uh, crying with are government hamara hai lekin le system unka hai hum kya karenge are system bhi tumhara banao and uh, uh, that is where i i appreciate this communists they just don't care for the system they just bulldoze their ideas if somebody is uh, obstructing just finish him off remove him from services you know you just uh, dismiss a civil servant what is going to happen he will go to, go to central court. administrative tribunal yeah okay he will fight there he will win the case uh you will file an appeal in the high court he has to fight you will lose because you have dismissed him you go to supreme court are mar jayega you don't understand the might of an administration you want to dismiss somebody you can dismiss you want to suspend somebody you can suspend you can publicly disown somebody you can do that which rajiv gandhi did with parth sarathi remember gp in a, in a yeah. press in a press meet he declared that parth sarathi is uh, i think his name was parth sarathi no yes 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 g parth yeah. sarathi right right ah uh, g parth sarathi is no more the foreign secretary khatam parth sarathi was uh, highly insulted everybody said oh rajiv should not have done that but rajiv did it you have to have some uh, ruthlessness in that administration ye rona dhona band karo system unka hai khali government hamara hai are kitne din roenge ab 8 saal ho gaya ho chuka hai abhi bhi aapka rona chalu to oh, uh, system <laughs> by system belongs to you change it remove the people put people with national moorings be it x y or z you should have clear cut national moorings if a bureaucracy loses its national moorings it will drift away it will see that the country is also drifting away and the next time next time take it from me if there is a coalition government or a congress government if it comes to power then you are not going to get back power in your life okay a kaam they will amend the constitution the ecosystem will support them they will uh, declare india as uh, autocratic they will declare family rule even whatever they do they will do therefore this is a golden chance for narendra modi and his cabinet 
to sincerely act for the uh, democracy and the situation now don't think george soros is mad george soros represents certain values of europe he, his voice is at least partially uh, belongs to europe generally india is not a democracy indian elections are farce this is what they imply their uh, their um, uh, you know uh, what they say is if their candidate win the election was okay free and fair if their candidate fails then uh, they will say that it is a shoddy democracy the democracy was upturned by exterior uh, means the evm was hacked all sorts of nonsense they will say. they will not accept defeat gracefully so therefore now they know that second time modi has come now third time if they get the power they are not going to give you back at all they will be the killers of uh, democracy and they will get support from uh, europe and even in america see nobody in this world believes or uh, care for democracy or any other thing everyone believes that my country is right my country should prosper my people have to be uh, safe nothing more than that all these um, uh, are speeches given in united nations big big long winding speeches in united nations uh, we also foolishly speak about uh, vasudeva kudumbakam uh, i will tell you why vasudeva kudumbakam is foolish in some other episode it is utterly foolish to uh, say vasudeva kudumbakam without knowing the context of that i'll explain in the next episode absolutely Thank sir you. and now let us take some questions uh, we are 35 32 minutes into our uh, uh, talk today so let's take some questions there are a fair amount of questions so let's see how many we can go through uh, kamala akshanai wants to know dr swami says modi government is not supporting his national herald case by not providing required docs and changing judge excuse if quoted him inaccurately then why such skill not used to scuttle soros it's an administrative decision what can i say you want to scuttle something you scuttle you want to uh, leave that free then you are leaving it free but in uh, soros case i think as i uh, understand uh, from the interview which was which was given to ani by dr jayashankar it is there in the youtube a very lengthy interview of, of uh, 1 hour 41 minutes or so very lengthy interview i heard it personally and in which he says that they are planning something about uh, this type of mischief likely to be created by people like soros now national herald of course i have no um, i am not privy to what is happening in uh, national herald so i will not comment uh, next question from ragunandan um sir george soros is just a face behind the soros which dictates people like soros and gats etc who did a hit job more dangerous your view on it i think you are talking about the foundation and you know there is a agenda that's already been said the money has been set aside sir the interesting thing is it the the fund is 12 billion dollars worth people look at his net worth and say oh he's only worth 8 billion no he has already set all these things long time ago that fund is working independent there it has a charter it is working in fact it is believed to be funding even imran khan so go ahead sir ah oh, yeah see ba, ba, there is nothing to comment on this statement this statement almost uh, is running parallel to what i have said thank you next question ragunandan again mohanda sir we need an organization like tsd to counter the enemy of bharat sir your view on it this is the technical support division that uh, vk singh had under him which was essentially you know like a tip of the spear in terms of military intelligence and trying to snuff out anti terrorism activities i don't know it, uh, it could help but uh, i am not a security expert uh, but uh, what i think is already they have mechanism in place only thing uh kerala is not in the main stay of their thinking that is my complaint 
uh, see there will be a scheme uh, uh, frame of mind in which uh, trouble spots are uh, identified uh, kerala is not one among the trouble spots still in the mind of uh, government of india that is my my grouse against the government that's all so a lot of good comments coming across i was just sharing them while you were answering the question sir let me see if there is a next question i'm bear with me while i scroll through this i'm still looking for the question here we go jaggi 10 wants to know what's the matter with sri padmanabha swami temple it seems like the cpim is planning to choke the temple resources and making an excuse for selling the precious ornaments gold etc no as of now cpm uh, doesn't have any plans and even if they have plans it can, they cannot uh, execute anything but uh, i have been uh, telling people who were celebrating the patmanabha swami temple everybody declared that the patmanabha swami temple is uh, relieved from government control no it's not <laughs> it is not out of government control what happened was i uh, what to what to say uh, the supreme court said that there will be a managing committee for the temple headed by the district judge with one member from government of india cultural department one member from government of kerala cultural department one uh, senior uh, auditor from government of uh, kerala then uh, one member of royal family one uh, tantri and one uh, pujari and some other this is the committee which is governing uh, the padmanabha swami temple uh, today according to supreme court judgment now uh, on that day itself i said the control from government has gone to uh, judiciary judiciary to cover the temple because the chairman is district judge in case right. district judge is not a hindu they said uh, you assistant district uh, judge ko bana do so that is how they are the committee so government of kerala is having one plus one two members in the nine member committee also they cannot do anything uh so uh, it is a sealed thing but you know what uh, uh, supreme court did not do the famous uh, 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 that uh, vault b vault it's not open yet supreme court was uh, afraid of opening it they said let the committee decide now committee has not taken any decision as of now because there is a popular belief uh, or superstition that those who are opening the b vault will get killed themselves by snake or by some accident or something because patmanabha doesn't like that now nobody want to take a risk on that so the judiciary cleverly uh, they shifted the onus on the committee and the committee is keeping mum on that and uh, patmanabha is uh, lying and uh, smiling he is always in the lying posture and he is in the he is with a smiling face uh, and he only knows what to do with the gold and what not to do with the gold thank you <laughs> even the non believers don't want to take a chance i see that very interesting <laughs> uh, here we go next question interesting one is shashi tharoor connected to soros does that explain his aggressive campaigns in last one year as part of regime change plans yeah we could uh, clearly link uh, the launch of shashi tharoor the timing of shashi tharoor and the uh, old shashi tharoor tweet that i met my friend george soros etc that has been digged out by somebody and it is uh, creating havoc in uh, social media he did write that Uh, uh he was or still is a friend of uh, george soros and uh, he was catapulted in uh, indian politics uh, ignoring all kerala politicians he became the leader recently 
he created a ruckus for nothing in kerala i don't know why he stopped it he started it he stopped it nobody knows what was uh, what for he was fighting nothing happened before fight and after fight congress remains same as fragmented as ever in kerala and shashi tharoor is silent now i don't know whether he is available in kerala or like uh, rahul gandhi shashi tharoor also goes for a foreign trip for few days he may uh, land again and create some other uh, ruckus we don't know but uh, uh, you can it is an admitted fact that shashi tharoor is uh, a friend of soros and uh, probably soros was behind the political launch of shashi tharoor gauri kulkarni wants to know how do you see kerala hindus in this picture uh, see uh, kerala hindus are like any other hindus like uh, hindus in gujarat hindus in tamil nadu hindus in assam so kerala hindus doesn't have any speciality they are same like any other uh, hindus uh, and probably uh, people ask this question because bjp is not winning in kerala that is because hindus are a minority in kerala let me uh, say the fact in 2011 the last census took place the muslim population was 27% now uh, a census has not taken place but uh, 10 12 years have passed muslim population might have crossed 35% in kerala add to that around 19% christians and other religions hindus are a minority in kerala and in kerala hindus does not take bjp as a serious uh, player in kerala politics bjp has to blame themselves for that because uh, they did not present a clear vision or what they are going to do for kerala nothing whatever modi does they want to ride on the modi wave nothing wrong in riding on that wave but uh, you have only the wave which is supporting you may not be acceptable for uh, uh, kerala that is why bjp is drawing a blank anyway that is another subject but as a matter of fact i have asked this question now bjp is in power uh, for more than 20 years in uh, gujarat more than 20 years in uh, madhya pradesh uh quite often uh, than not in uh, uttar pradesh now take a hindu in uh, gujarat and take a hindu in kerala and ask them what is the difference in your life nothing nothing what is the difference in your outlook nothing nothing change one is voting uh, congress or cpm or bjp the other is by and large voting bjp kya farak padta hai kuch nahi hai kuch nahi no difference at all so therefore don't think that uh, kerala hindus are a different lot or they are uh, condescending they have uh, lost the war aisa kuch nahi hai they behave like any other hindu that is all. haridas wants a, has a more pointed question he says bjp president of kerala mr surendran's credentials are not good why bjp is persisting with this fellow at the helm <laughs> better ask this question to jp nadda not to me <laughs> good answer sir very good answer next question from neta mafia if narendra modi contests from tamil nadu in 2024 will that have a positive effect on hindu votes in kerala too for the bjp ah uh, will have some cascading effect but uh, not to the level that the bjp captures power in kerala kerala and tamil nadu are very close and only separated by the mountains uh, therefore whatever is happening in uh, tamil nadu will have a small impact in kerala also at least in the border districts that way uh, if tamil nadu changes kerala will also marginally change next question if five bjp karyakarta started opening an office in every constituency to continue continue the benefits of central government do you think things will change 
Jaggi Tan again? Uh -huh. I will not answer such questions. It's all the internal matter of BJP. I'm nobody to comment on that. Next question. Uh, Ragunandan, TG Mohandas Kerala is gone now, waiting for something to happen like JNK. We will be killed like in Hindus, uh, Kashmiri Hindus, sir. Your views on it. I think what he's trying to do is draw a contrast that in Gujarat, the chances of the genocide of Hindus is a lot less compared to Kerala. I think look at it from that point of view, sir. Now, see, Kerala is, uh, in fact, it is like uh, Kashmir now, except for the violence. The violence will start a uh, little bit later when the Muslim population crosses uh, 50 percent or 55 percent, there could be violence. Now, since they have crossed to only 35 percent, they act uh, in a constitutional manner. Now, in Kerala, you see no government can act without uh, ignoring a veto from the Muslim uh, community. They have veto power on every matter, whatever you do, they have a veto power. This is, uh, uh, the situation will not uh, reverse now. Uh, the few research and things like that have shown that uh, once you cross the threshold of 30% uh, of the population, uh, uh, then uh, there is no going back. It is going to be an Islamic country. So Kerala is an Islamic region uh, even now. To become uh, Kashmir, it may take another uh, 10 years, 5 years at least. It may take. Uh, it, there will not be much violence in uh, Kerala, as you think, because it is uh, much more. The techniques which they adopt in uh, Kashmir uh, was different because Pakistan is nearby. You can uh, send your troops from here, there. All sorts of nonsense can be played. But Kerala doesn't have a border with pa Pakistan. So the violence which is being, uh, uh, which was being uh, orchestrated in uh, Kashmir, you cannot uh, expect that in Kerala. But it will be some other uh, thing. Uh, let us see in future we are going to see that. Jaggi Ten again, are we expecting the Sabarimala airport to happen? Yes, why not? I don't think uh, there is an uh, objection to that. But uh, not it's not a Shabrimala airport. It is far away from uh, Shabrimala. Uh, people just connect it to uh, Shabrimala, that's all. But uh, it's all um, uh, very clear. Only the land ownership is in dispute, which will eventually sorted out by court and the airport can pick up. Um, last two questions, guys. We will not take any more questions. Thank you very much for your support. Manu S. Kumar, uh, Mohanda, sir, can Christians change their voting pattern in favor of BJP? Ah, yeah, why not? They have already changed. See, there are so many Christians in Kerala who vote BJP, so many Muslims in Kerala vote BJP. In other places also, you see, in uh, Uttar Pradesh, almost. Um, uh, uh, see, almost every MP was was a uh, Hindu. Uh, who voted, voted them? Muslims voted them. So Muslims have uh, no problem with BJP. Now uh, we have to check whether BJP has a problem with Muslims. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this is the last question for the show. Nagunandan uh, wants to know, T.G. Mohandasi, then we, our only option is to genocide of Muslims and Christians, sir. Your view on it. You can't kill anyone. Come on now. That's not, that's not democracy. <laughs> you have to keep law and order fair for everyone. That is the most important thing. Things will settle down. And population control law has to be done. You have no option. You have to bring UCC, then population control, then an NRC, National Registry of Citizens. All three have to happen. One, two, three. Within a matter of days, that is how you are going to at least bring some order to the country, according to me. Uh, Mondasi, please chime in. Okay, if uh, uh, that could be the concluding remark, let us uh, end this discussion. No, that's my my take, sir. You, I answered it for you, but you can answer if you what you what you think is. The no, right I answer. see. 
don't don't imagine this type of genocide of a particular community whether it is hindu or muslim etc it's uh, impractical and uh, it is generated by an angry mind yes don't get yes. Uh, angry don't yeah. get frustrated be always uh, cool and composed uh, have self confidence our country has seen bigger uh, evils uh, than this and we have handled with that you know how we handled the kashmir problem though belatedly so if there is a kerala problem that will also be handled uh, my request uh, to the central government is that please give more attention to kerala because kerala is more uh, vulnerable than any other state this is a border state please keep in mind you know this uh, this observation i kind of agree also every time i go to kerala i feel a little bit more arabification uh, kerala was not a place that i used to get arabic script suddenly now a lot of name plates number plates are in arabic and uh, that is a surprise this is an imported stuff it's not easy even muslims in kerala they speak very good malayalam in fact many of them even speak sanskrit so i mean before we start jumping up and down about oh so much percentage their knowledge of shastras is quite quite deep because we at at one point we were all hindus understand that point that fundamental point that we were all hindus this is bharat varsha thank you so much uh, mohandas ji and i think on, on that note we will uh, close this program and as always please like share and subscribe to our channel i'm hoping that mohandas ji will be back on a weekly basis all wednesdays at 8 pm and thank you once again mohandas ji namaskar namaste thank you